Hey, afternoon, everybody. Can you all hear me? Importantly, can you all understand me? Sorry, I'm an English guy. I don't have a South African accent, so I hope you can all understand. Um, just a little bit about me, myself. Uh, my name is Anthony Somerset, obviously. Um, I work as an infrastructure engineer for W3 Edge. Um, they are a development agency and responsible for the W3 Total Cash plugin. I'll talk a little bit more about that one briefly later. Um, I basically manage infrastructure day to day, which means servers and the W3 website um, on the hardware side. And we do a lot of stuff for clients, um, particularly using Amazon Web Services, so EC2, Elasticash, RDS, so on and so on. Um, I support users of the W3 Total plugin um, as the need arises. Um, and also, um, I do a little bit of, I have done a little bit of work on the W3 Total Cash plugin itself. Um, just as a bit of information about that, we are releasing a new version of the plugin this month with lots of bug fixes, um, a couple of new features. Um, a couple of the big notable ones is that we have fixed and improved varnish support. So you can actually purge by IP with the new version rather than having to use the host name. And also we've done some work um, with WPCLI, which is, um, uh, if you've heard of Drupal, dare I mention that name here? Yeah. Um, they've, got a, they've, they've got a system called Drush, which is basically command line tasks for, for Drupal. WPCLI is a similar thing. We're bringing support for that into the plugin so that if we update the plugin, you will have the latest demand if you use that tool. In my spare time, I'm also a motorsport nut of the four wheel variety. Okay, so just today, briefly, um, I'm going to talk about configuring and optimizing MySQL, MySQL. Um, including some general WordPress stuff. I'm going to talk about PHP and then APC, configuring the stack. Um, common caveats with that, um, particularly with APC, it has a few pitfalls. And I'll talk about the W3 total cache, some recommended configuration. Um, as um, one of the key things I'd like to get away from today is that default configurations are generally not always the most optimized. And someone mentioned this morning, I think it's Benny, always be optimizing. And I think that's probably a good candidate to take away. And then I'll finish up with questions. Just as a bit of a funny aside, I wanted to tackle the question of Nginx or Apache. Um, quite simply, um, if you're using Apache with mod PHP, which is the default, Nginx wins every time. If you're using a fast CGI and PHP FPM, it's comparable. Put varnish in front of all that, it doesn't really matter. Um, so the next stuff I'm going to talk about, you need to have root level access to your servers. Um, quite simply, the stuff I'm going to talk about you can't do if you're on shared hosting. Um, I'm assuming that you've built your stack, so you've installed Nginx or Apache or PHP, MySQL, and so on. So I'm assuming that you know what you're doing. I'm also not, I'm assuming you're not using WAMP if you're a Windows user. Um, and so we're talking about production here. And I'm assuming that you're comfortable with typing commands in the command line, restarting services, and so on and so on. There are some recommended resources. I'm not sure you can see them on here, but um, I'm sure Ash will put this on the website later. Um, this is just four of many that I picked out of Google this morning, uh, last night even. Um, so we'll start with MySQL 2. Um, now, all of this stuff I could spend an hour or two hours or even more talking on. Um, so um, I'm just picking the kind of the top ones that I've found to, that have the biggest effect uh, in terms of performance. Um, so we're, it's a bit of a whistle stop tool, um, so we'll just carry on. The database is often the first bottleneck in anything WordPress if you're doing sequence. Um, just because it's query for posts, comments, also. And if your site is receiving a lot of comments, a lot of hits, and they require queries to be made, the MySQL database is often the first thing that gets hit and struggles. 
Um, so obviously optimizing MySQL, MySQL is the best place to start really. Um, just so you know, config files are obviously um, found most commonly in forward slash etc um, slash my.cnf, Debian, Ubuntu. They like to be different. It's in a different place. Um, most configuration options don't need you to restart the server. So if this is a production server, you can actually try out some of these options on the fly without restarting your server. Although I can never recommend that to anybody. Do it in a test environment first. I've learned that the hard way. And just so you know, there's a map, the command is set at at global option and a variable if necessary. And obviously, um, MySQL reload, which is um, if you're used to um, reloading services without restarting them to obviously speed up the process and not basically break things, that does not work on most systems reliably. So it's actually safer to restart. And just some useful um, programs. Um, there we go. Some useful tools for tuning MySQL. There's MySQL Tuner and Tuning Primer. They're just two scripts. One's a Perl script, one's a shell script. They basically look at your database, what's coming in in terms of connections and things are, and they basically um, where your bottlenecks are and allow you to tune for that. So I might mention um, that you'll get certain data out of those two tools. So um, just generally, if you can, convert all your MyISAM tables to InnoDB or InnoDB, depending on how you pronounce that. Um, you do lose WordPress search functionality on your posts, but to be fair, it was never really that great anyway. Um, just, just as um, a caveat to that, you'd obviously need to use a custom search plugin. There's two that I've just recommended there. The first one is WordPress Sphinx plugin. Um, it, it uses the tool Sphinx Search Daemon. Um, it's obviously another piece of software. The plugin itself can actually set that up for you and enable it, install it, and so on and so on. And then the second one is Google Custom Search, which no extra software. You just have to integrate it with Google and follow the instructions. Um, just as a bit of background for that, InnoDB scales much better than MyISAM, um, particularly because it does what's called row-level locking instead of table-level locking. Um, in a nutshell, that basically means if you're having lots and lots of comments come in or lots and lots of people posting posts on, on a site, um, it means that the admin area won't lock up for seconds at a time whilst it's trying to process those inserts. So particularly on the comments side, if your site's very popular, get InnoDB running. Also has better memory caching support, that kind of stuff, which obviously, when you're optimizing MySQL, you want to be able to optimize as much as you can. OK, so I'm just going to start on some particular config variables um, that you'd use in MySQL. First off is the obvious one, max connections. Set this to at least the number of connections you see hitting the database. If it's too small, you're going to be hitting database errors, and you don't want to hit that. I've done it myself. It hurts. Um, also, just add 20%, um, just so that you've got a little bit of spare leg room. Um, basically, I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff on MySQL, and it's dependent on RAM. Um, I'll talk about PHP in a minute, which is dependent on CPU. Um, so with MySQL, you want to optimize the RAM you have available, the memory, that is. Um, so a lot of these things, the more you adjust them, the more RAM they use. Therefore, obviously, if you've got the RAM available, make the most of it. If you don't have it available, you might have to tweak a few of these variables back a little bit. OK, so next is skip name resolve. Now, if you're using um, localhost as your database, so if your LAMP stack is Apache and MySQL on the same box, this is not really going to have an effect for you. Um, so, but what we have found is that on all those new database connections, um, if you put this variable in, you'll save 20% on initial connection time, just because it's not having to look up a host name to resolve the IP that you're connecting from and check all the permissions. Um, the obvious caveat of that is you cannot use host names for user permissions in MySQL users. 
Um, next, query cache size. Now, by default, most distributions of MySQL do not enable the query cache. This is not great, obviously, because we want to be able to cache as many queries as possible, particularly if they're the same ones over and over again. Um, and the caveat on that is don't set it more than 128 megs because it's expensive to clear the MySQL query cache. And more often than not, clearing the query cache when it's above 128 megs is worse than any gains you get by having the larger cache. So just be very careful if you're ever playing with that one. And can you see that temp table size, max heap table size? They are, in a nutshell, they control when MySQL is performing any complex operations, it copies your data into temp tables. That basically means that it doesn't destroy your data if it fails. Now, um, what you need to make sure is that these temp tables, um, these variables basically set the amount of memory it uses. If the table is bigger than that, it will copy to disk. Disk is slow compared to memory. So you obviously always want to keep it in memory. If you've got the RAM available, set both of them. Keep them the same. It's simpler that way. Set both of them at least the size of your biggest table. Um, and any MySQL tool should be able to tell you the size of your tables. Um, just find the biggest one. It will be either comments or posts or post meta. Um, and then InnoDB buffer pool size. So I was talking about InnoDB having better memory support and RAM caching and all that kind of thing. This is just one of those variables. If you set that as large as your database, plus 15, 20%, um, basically, what effectively happens is that your whole database then runs in RAM. Um, obviously, then you don't have to look at the disks. Obviously, it will save to disk, but you can serve all those select queries straight out of memory, much, much faster than running, loading it all off disk. Um, next, a few more. Um, file per table. This is another InnoDB variable. Um, if you have hardware RAID on your servers, which I hope you do if you're running hardware servers and not virtual servers, just because this is the best way to get speed out of your disks. Um, if you have hardware RAID and you have multiple disks in that RAID, so it's not just a single two disk mirror or stripe. Um, so if you've got four disks or more in there, um, this is really, really helpful because what happens is it splits your database tables into physical table files for each table on the disk. And if you've obviously got multiple disks, reading from that is much faster than trying to read one file. Um, um, and yeah, obviously, I've just pointed a caveat out there. RAID 5 or RAID 6, which are basically um, known as parity RAIDs, um, which the whole idea is that they give you more space um, less wastage um, whilst giving the same kind of RAID performance, they're, they're still kind of not the best for performance with MySQL. Um, if, you, um, if, you're, if you're struggling for RAM and you're needing disk access, RAID 10 is still the best hardware RAID level to have for performance of disks. Also causes the least problems when you have a disk failure. Um, in ODB flush method, equals O direct. It sounds Greek, don't worry. Basically means that um, it won't use disk caching to write um, your MySQL queries to disk. Basically means that disk changes, so your files will be updated faster, um, and you then don't waste time with other system caches. Um, but just be aware, only do this if you've got hardware RAID again, and preferably if your RAID has battery backup. If you're not sure about it, ask your server provider. They'll happily tell you if your RAID does or doesn't have it. And they'll probably want to charge you more if it doesn't. Um, InnoDB log file size. Um, this is basically the size of the log file on the disk. And the log file is basically how you would restore in the event of a failure. Um, if it's basically, if MySQL fails um, for any reason, when it restarts, it reads this file to read back the data to make sure it hasn't broken anything. Um, it's usually pretty bulletproof. Um, the one thing I do is set it to about a gig, which is 1024 meg. 
um, just because rotating the log is, again, another expensive di disk process. And obviously, you don't want it constantly having to rotate that log, because I think the default is 50 meg. The only caveat about this one is stop MySQL before you make the change in the config file. So stop MySQL, change the config file, then restart it. Otherwise, you'll get complaints about the log file being the incorrect size. And it's, if you don't know where you're looking and, and that happens, it's um, pretty frustrating at times. And then the uh, log buffer size. Um, again, the, basically, this is the value that um, it's the value of data. So it's the amount of data it will cache in RAM before it writes to disk. Too low, and you're constantly writing to disk, losing performance all the time. Too high, if you have a problem, you lose that amount of data. And that's potentially quite a few queries in WordPress speak. And then the obvious caveat is the slow logging. I've obviously not put the config lines there for you. Only enable it if you're actively debugging uh, an issue with WordPress or MySQL queries, just because it can suck performance because it's writing to a second log file as well as performing the actions. So it can cause quite a few performance issues on busy sites. If it's um, a test site, then leave it on, obviously. Now, I'm just moving MySQL database stuff over to WordPress. I've got five top tips for improving database performance from the WordPress side. First, delete spam comments. You don't want them in there anyway, so why leave them hanging around? Secondly, clear out old paste post or page revisions. Um, I've linked to a WordPress codex um, pay, page, which allows you to limit that specifically within the, um, within the WP config file. There are also plugins that allow you to, on the fly, remove old revisions um, from the database. Just literally search database revisions on WordPress.org. Um, next is obviously limiting the autosave interval. Um, if it's just you blogging on the site in terms of being an admin, don't worry about this one. If you have lots of editors, administrators, posts, posters, that kind of thing, if there's lots of people blogging on your site, particularly if they blog at the same time, reducing this value reduces load on the database. So sorry, increasing the time, two minutes is probably a nice safe variable. Um, reducing, so increasing the time reduces the load on the database, which further increases performance. And then clear out trash posts, because they're trash for a reason, right? Um, you can do this by WP cron. There is a little variable in WP config, which basically says empty the trash after X days. It's not set by default, because um, it won't delete. So it won't delete. If you add that line, it's linked on the codex page again and it will um, automatically delete those old trash posts for you. And then another one is using an alternative comment system. So if you use something like Discuss, if you configure it, um, you can configure it in such a way that it effectively you then don't have database load for comments, but then you have a great looking comment system without much work. So it's win-win, really. Um, and then just generically, database-wise, if a single database server can't cope, then you need to look at MySQL replication or database caching, which is what the W3 Total Cache plugin does. Um, w, um, database replication, um, there is the HyperDB plugin, or um, there's what we call W3TC Enterprise, in a nutshell, that does, um, it's obviously a paid plugin. Um, if you want more information about that, contact Fred directly via the website. Um, but basically, one of the key features it does is database clustering, um, obviously splitting your reads and writes. But what it also does is you can actually sp split your single database over multiple servers. So you could send certain tables to certain database servers, which gets way beyond the scope of general WordPress um, and gets into the realms of all sorts of database admin stuff. Okay, so that's MySQL, PHP. Um, it's, as I mentioned, MySQL is um, pretty much memory constrained. 
PHP tends to be CPU constrained, so memory is never really an issue with PHP unless you have a memory leak. Um, so CPU, um, PHP, it's all about reducing CPU usage or doing it effectively. Um, on that, just PHP files, they're, they're obviously in different locations for different systems. I've just mentioned Debian, Ubuntu, and Red Hat CentOS as the locations for those files, the way you'd make changes. Um, some of the OSs use included files, so you can break your php.ini file into lots of different things. So you can have an include file for APC, you can have an include file for memcache if you're using it, and so on and so on. Um, you generally need to restart the PHP service if you're using FPM. If you're using Apache and mod PHP, which is default, you can reload and it will work. Obviously, um, I'm mentioning APC in a minute, but using an opcode cache, whether that be APC or eAccelerator or Xcache, um, then that will give you the biggest gains in PHP by far. I'm actually not going to make too many references to specific config um, stuff here. And then obviously, um, it's, it's quite simple. I've, I've mentioned mod, modules. It should be, um, it's PHP modules. So if you don't need encrypt, which I think you probably do off the top of my head, if you don't need um, IMAP modules in PHP, just disable them. Um, Debian, for example, you can install or uninstall the modules. So you're only loading the minimum amount of PHP you need to do the job. Consequently, also only do required stuff in WordPress. So if you can reduce your plugin count, reduce your plugin count. Don't, I'd, I'd, I'd also say avoid doing your backup from WordPress plugins. Um, what normally happens is they hit memory limits, time limits, and they slow your server to a crawl at that point of the day. Um, it's better to use a separate tool, um, whether that be a separate program or scripts that you run to back up the database and your files. Um, just as a note, if you are using VaultPress, it's probably a really good idea to enable the SFTP or FTP options and the MySQL stuff, because that will really improve the speed of your site, because then VaultPress is not having to process everything through WordPress, and it doesn't have to load the WordPress stack to back up your files. Um, uh, this sounds like a really, really obvious rule, but watch memory usage. Um, there are various tools you can use. Um, GoDaddy, SlowDaddy, or whatever you want to call them. They released a plugin called P3 Profiler. This is really good for finding out where your memory leaks are, particularly in WordPress, which plugins are sucking memory out of PHP like nobody's business. If you generally need more than 128 megs memory limit on PHP consistently, um, so for single tasks like um, cron tasks, um, backup tasks, if you're, if you're doing that, using more than that is OK. But if you're consistently hitting the memory limit at 128, then I'd investigate via P3 Profiler um, another service that isn't WordPress related, um, New Relic. This also can help you debug um, memory issues. Um, I, yeah, if you're using more than 128, look at what's using more, more memory than it needs to be. Don't extend max execution time. Again, this is another no-brainer, but if something is taking more than 30 seconds to process going through the web server, this is, so command line tasks excluded. If it's taking more than 30 seconds to process, there's something wrong, really. Um, it shouldn't be going through the web server if it's taking that long to go through PHP. It's just going to slow your server down. It's going to slow your site down and cause all sorts of stuff to go wrong. Um, disabling WP cron and switching it to a system cron task. Now, I'm aware that on the WordPress codex site, they don't recommend doing this. I do recommend doing this. That is actually the um, WP config line there over on the left. Um, this basically reduces the number of PHP calls you make on your website. Um, on a particularly busy site, this can be quite an impact. Um, it's known to cause race conditions, as it's known as, where basically one cron task loads, runs something, another cron task loads, and they're trying to do the same thing, and they get locked up, and it basically leads to a spiraling pending doom, basically. 
Um, also, obviously, if you do that, disable WP cron, set it into the um, system cron. Um, and setting it at regular defined intervals obviously helps you if you're scheduling posts but don't have a lot of traffic to your website or if you utilize um, some kind of page caching either via WP super cache, WP cache or W3 total cache. If you're using the disk caching or page caching options, quite often WP cron might not fire, which means if you've got scheduled posts, they might not get scheduled and might not get posted. So changing to system cron is a good idea anyway. Remember to obviously set your post max size and upload max file size for your, down, for, your, for your uploads. So any files you upload to WordPress, make sure you've set those variables high enough to be able to upload your files. Particularly nowadays, digital camera images are in the order of three or four megs. Um, default PHP off the top of my head is still two meg for max file size or max post size rather. Um, setting date dot time zone. Um, this has only become prevalent in recent releases of PHP, particularly 5.3 onwards. If you don't set it, your, your web server or PHP FPM error logs will be full of um, errors that said date time zone not set. It's bad to rely on the system for this. It's not going to break anything, but the problem is if you don't set it, that log will fill up, particularly on a busy site. Again, that's disk access, that's slowing things down, and we don't want to slow things down. I've seen this happen on my own server once. If you're using multiple servers, um, I've not really gotten touched on multiple servers. Um, this is a WordPress thing specifically. Set the session save handler to use memcache. So this is a PHP setting. So you have to install memcache, install the memcache PHP module. Um, it's in PECL or PECL, however you want to say that. Um, set the session save handler to memcache, otherwise, you won't get keep, otherwise you'll keep getting logged out when you try and save posts. Um, that's not strictly a performance thing, but it's just an interesting caveat if you're using multiple servers in PHP. OK, APC. This is probably one of the best um, opcode caches for PHP. It's going to get more popular because when they eventually release PHP version 6, it's going to be integrated directly. So you won't even need to install it. It's all, it will already be there. Um, so to install it on Debian, it's really, really easy. I'm assuming um, if you're using Debian, you're using the .deb repositories. Um, they're just a set of repositories where you can get the latest version of Nginx, PHP, and MySQL, along with a few other goodies. Um, and to install um, APC using Debian and .deb, that command there, really simple. Red Hat CentOS, again, um, I've assumed that you're using Epil or Remy um, to keep your PHP up to date. And if, if you're using the default PHP um, provided by your OS, it's fine. But it's better to keep it up to date as possible generally because you'll find that PHP will be updated with security fixes much faster than the various package providers, Debian, CentOS, etc., update theirs. So obviously keeping PHP up to date is good for security purposes. So that's that. And um, just in case you are using cPanel, you can either use the WHM interface or Peckle install APC. OK, so configuring it. I think this is going to be broken. Yes, it's supposed to be over the two. Um, this is just a config file from the W3TC plugin. Um, and this is probably one of the kind of a recommended APC config. Um, I'll make sure this is on the website so that you can see it all. Um, basically, um, if you drop that in, everything should work. There are some caveats, however, with that. Um, apc.stat. If you set apc.stat to zero, that basically means that APC will not read your file system for file changes. That means if you update a PHP file on your server, it's not going to see it. You need to reload a APC or clear APC to, to see that change. So if on a development server, it's not really worth it. However, this saves a rather large amount of file system reads. 
I'd, I'd argue as much in the area of 30 to 40 percent of speed gain and scale is from APC stat. Um, the SHM size, make sure it's large enough for what you're putting in there. So if you're using W3 total cache with APC, make sure this is big enough. What normally happens if it's not big enough, you either get nasty errors on your screen that says something about MMAP failed and all this kind of thing, or it just white screens, which provides even more frustration because you can't see what the error is. Um, so make sure it's big enough um, and make sure you've got enough RAM for that, obviously. It's better in that case if you don't have enough memory to not use APC, or at least not cache in APC. In rare cases, um, MMAP file mask, which if, I look, if you look at the previous slide, um, it, um, it's currently set at temp APC XXXXX. Um, in rare cases, that causes file system issues where it basically writes to disk 100% of the time, and that's not good. If you ever have that issue, it should be quite rare. I've not seen it happen in the last six months. Um, just change that to forward slash dev forward slash zero. Um, and obviously, the TTLs, set them too low. Um, things don't get cached long enough. Set them too high, and you'll hit the cache full issue. If it's set to zero, it means the cache gets flushed completely as soon as cache gets full, and that's bad. I'm just going to briefly um, talk about t t W3TC. I'm aware that I'm running out of time, so I'll just um, very quickly brush over this. As I said, defaults are not fail safe, and they're just fail safe. They're not the most optimal. The best config for se single server is not the same as multi server. Generally, um, what you want to do is page cache, use the disk if you can. Rewrites are faster than PHP. Um, obviously, multiple servers use something like memcache because you need to keep it consistent. Minify, if you can, use disk um, on single sites, memcache for multiple. Database, avoid the disk if you can. It's just lots of files. It's not worth it if you've done the database side of things properly like earlier. Um, otherwise, use APC. Object cache, APC is always the fastest. Use memcache if you have to for multiple servers, obviously. CDN, sounds simple. Enable it. Origin pull is the simplest and easiest. And use the API versions if you can. So if you're using Max CDN, use the Max CDN option and plug in your API keys. It just allows you to purge things, and it's much better. Um, browser cache, um, there's just a few caveats there. Enable all except e-tags if you can. If you're using multiple servers or your CDN needs it, enable e-tags um, just um, for speed. Um, also, if you're using CDN, make sure you've set the cookie domain. Um, it just allows things to just go much faster because it reduces request sizes. Page cache, and I'm nearly done. Um, if you enable f caching 404 pages, warning, this returns a 200 page response. Um, basically, if you're caching your 404 pages with W3TC, you're not actually giving a 404 response to the end user, even if you're giving them a nice 404 page. Um, this, obviously, if you're conscious of your SEO, this can have an impact, so just be aware of that. Um, obviously, don't cache pages for logged in users. If you disable this option, beware of the admin bar appearing for logged out users and showing your lovely username as you're logged into WordPress. Um, cache feeds if you can, even if you're using FeedBurner, just because it's, it saves server resources and that's worthwhile. And use a sitemap plugin and prime your prime W3TC with your sitemap. Recommended sitemap plugin is WordPress SEO by Yoast. It has sitemap features. Um, and that is it. 